the capitalistic way of developing this country it's a huge challenge because we need to do lots of extraction be it water be it sand and gravel anything that could be maximized for people's development this issues about water drainage land even the the simple comprehensive land use plan it will be affected by the impact of climate change court aid is the Catholic Organization for Relief and Development Aid. We're members of the Caritas Network. We're also members of the SIDSE Network. We're also a member of the Partners for Resilience Alliance. The Partners for Resilience is an alliance of five Netherlands-based organizations working in Central America, Africa, and South and Southeast Asia. One of our focus countries is the Philippines. The Philippines is extremely vulnerable to climate change, with as much as 70% of its cities located along the coastline. Regular flooding in these cities undermines infrastructure, disrupts economic activity, and impedes the delivery of basic services. So, panahon sa climate change, there is a nasa climate change na epektado po ng ato ang barangay, sama sa sobrang nga init, na inaitabo nga uh, grass fire, no? so katulong na yun na tabo nga na grass fire. Kung sa sobrang nga ulan, gamay lang ganing nga ulan, mo, ay, kung na yun, mulunok na yun ang atong mga uh, sitios. So, mo kini problema sa among drainage, no? Sa so, problema po sa basura, diha sulod sa atong barangay, o sa gawas po sa atong barangay. We advocate an approach called Integrated Risk Management. Integrated Risk Management is a systematic integration of disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, and environmental management and restoration, based on an assumption that disasters will increase in frequency and intensity as a result of climate change, and will be further compounded as a result of our degrading ecosystem and environmental services. So, participatory disaster risk assessment so mo to nga nag hazard mapping mi no hazard mapping mi sa kada sitios hazard mapping sa nga ma kalamidad sama sa typhoon sa pagbaha sa linog ug sa sunog allowing the people to understand especially when we talk about risks climate risk assessment the landscape approach is very powerful. Powerful in a sense that people can sense how important is the, um, the ecosystem-based approach. Like what's the relationship with people living in the, in the lowland areas linked to the upland areas, people living in the uh, river systems, uh, people living in the ridge or in the mountains, they can see the connection. The second heart chaplaincy started uh, this urban resilience project, but uh, we came to a point that we could say we cannot do it all by ourselves. We cannot do it alone. We have to work with uh, uh, groups who are uh, willing to, to, to help and who has the capacity to help, like uh, the government like uh, some uh, non-government uh, organizations or people's organizations uh, and there are a lot of, of, of these organizations Based on the assessment that we did, one of the uh, crucial problems that we see is the open defecation in the major areas in Hagobiao. There are also problems in waste disposal that cause uh, flooding. And also we found out in the springs and wells that we have that we have the water contamination. From these four critical problems that we see in Hagobiao, we need to have an integrated approach to deal with this problem. First is 
with the open defecation problem, we need to have the communal septic tank, especially to the vulnerable families who are living in the flooded areas. And also with the waste disposal, we have a strategy on waste banking, vermicomposting and eco blocks and other livelihood initiatives that link with the waste disposal. With the flooding issue, we try to have a drainage management at the local level, at the same time with the landscape level approach in terms of drainage management. For the water contamination, since most of the vulnerable families are living in Hagobia who uses the deep well, and we all know that it's already contaminated, one of the strategies that the project did is the water electrolysis. It means uh, electrolyzing this water and make uh, into a higher pH level, and it can be used for the domestic use and drinking water. All these things that we have here is the risk. If we, if we will not solve this in the future, there's a big disaster that will happen or a risk that will happen in the community. But we wanted to solve this in an integrated way, so that's why we have this integrated risk management. We all know that in the urban setting, issues are very complex and integrated. So the issue of flooding uh, cannot be addressed in one barangay, but it should be a landscape approach. Means uh, all the neighboring barangay that are affected with that kind of problem should be part of action uh, to resolve the problem. If there's an ownership of the process, again, who will say no? Who will say no to that? But again, it has to be a well-defined uh, decision-making. It has to be understood. At the same time, it should be taken from the people themselves. We are really grateful that the barangay is now active with the involvement of this program. Not just the barangay, but also the private sectors. And also the church, they are also involved. And we can see that we are, they are, help, we are helping each other. Like we are already concerned with the cleanliness of the environment, like the dredging of the canal. Certainly it will, it will solve the flood problem of the other, other areas. To sustain the project, to sustain the, this livelihood that we have started, um, we try to bring it to, uh, to the, the, the local government. Kung baga yung sa barangay unit namin, yung barangay namin, pinapasok namin doon yung plano namin sa, of the urban resiliency. Pinapasok namin doon sa plano ng uh, barangay para masustain siya because it's the only uh, way na to sustain. Uh, Dako kakikatabang ma'am, gawa sa mga... Membro, labi na itong mga silingan na mo nga wasa kita yung income. Sama na mga plastic bottle nga mong mapalit. Trabaho ko sana sa mga silingan na mo nga wasa yung income. Labi na ng mga timid job, senior citizen na. Magpanit lang sa panit sa mineral. Palit ito sana mong 3 pesos kada kilo. Ginan siya na kayo na sila po. Nya usap po. Naka-income sila. Nya sa amos ang mga membro sad. Ang silbi, ang ilas ang ipanitan. O gamo na sang madispos nga ito sa dako na nga kanang... Silbi timbangan, nakaginan siya, gudmi, nagya po may mabahin kaya po. Adako juga kay katabang ma'am, sa barangay, sa mga drainage, kay labi na ng mga plastic battle. Huwag din na na mo makuha sa, sa kadaadlaw. Murag ato na, paingos kanal, so usagin na mo stock up sa drainage ad. Mas labing maayo nga naami, daghan may membro, daghan may scrappers, at least daghan may makuha kadaadlaw. Kanang 100 kilo sa matag adlaw, nga masood na mo sa junk shop, nga nakuha na na mo na sa matag area, sa kanal ba, or napalit ba na mo, sa krasada. So kari na na sa mo junk shop, so di na nakabarang ato, kay nakuha naman na mo siya. Looking forward, Cord Aid is very committed to be able to support communities and local actors in the Philippines to be able to identify critical risks that they face, develop strategies as a basis of working together and being able to implement interventions through an integrated risk management approach to be safer in the future. If this will be replicated, it will have a kind of massive uh, positive uh, effect no? for each community to really be resilient in whatever forms of climate and disaster impacts. I hope na with the um, people of the community who are starting to participate and cooperate, magiging ano siya, uh, masusustain. I believe masustain talaga eh. Challenges is there. There are a lot of challenges but I can see that little by little ang mga tao ay starting to participate, starting to, to cooperate and starting to come out 